please, we give it up for Joshua Galvin! Where, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Keep going, keep going! There he is! He's here! Uh, thank you. I think you'll enjoy this. A few of the action fans. Yeah. Whoosh! Yeah, that was a, that was a bit like a Schwarzenegger film, wasn't it? You're probably thinking. But a rubbish one like uh, Hercules in New York, something like that. Um, speaking of muscular men, segue, uh, are there any um, ladies in the audience tonight? Yeah, I could, I could smell the scents. Chamomile, bergamot, betrayal. Um, no, you're very lucky, ladies, because I'm known as the magician of sexuality. Yeah, because I can make your arousal <laughs> magically disappear. Um, incidentally, with most of your silverware as well. So, no, um, I've, I've actually got a poem for the ladies, and it goes a little something like this. Lady over there with the uh, oh-so-fair hair. You remind me of a Nazi officer. But, but a good one that just did admin and things like that, none of the old light. Schnauf! That. Sorry. Um, oh, I've forgotten. Uh, lady over there um, with your hair pinned back. It's not, but it's a rhyme. It doesn't matter. Nice rack with which you use to organise your various herbs and spices. <laughs> hey, the best kind of fun is organised fun. Any serial killer will tell you that. Right. All right. Um, um, lady over there. I'd like to take you upstairs, but unfortunately I own a bungalow, so that's logistically impossible. Soz. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I wrote that little ditty while I was out on the lonely road just outside my house. The traffic fucking hated it. Um, what? Bob Dylan? No, 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 I wrote that. What? That poem was as good as, if not better than any Bob Dylan song ever made, period. Well, you're the critic, invisible man. What? Schizophrenia? Probably. <clears throat> now, uh, has anyone been to a little town called Stratford-upon-Avon? Yeah, Shakespeare County. Alas, poor Yorick, parking £2.50 an hour. Um, no, I, I went recently and I had the chance to go to Shakespeare's house. I went and played crazy golf instead. Um, it's just, I don't imagine Shakespeare's house is all that interesting because he doesn't have the mod cons of today, does he? He doesn't have a PS4 or a Snapchat. High five to the youth of today, two years too late. No, um, they, have, they don't have modern things there. Uh, I learned that at school. So um, you'd be there at Shakespeare's house and you'd just be pacing back and forth. He'd be writing his prose with his uh, feathery pen or quill. And you have to say something eventually. So you have to go, all right, Billy Shizzle. That's his nickname. All right, Billy Shizzle. How about you and me, the lads, or as close as we come to that in the gender stereotype, how about you and me hit the old crazy golf? And of course, William Shakespeare, master of prose and the spoken word, will say something so, so very profound and off the cuff. Like, uh, nay, crazy golf is as irrelevant as the moon is to the sun. Uh, all right, then, uh, do you want some toast? Uh, nay, toast is as boorish as a king among vagrants. Uh, do you want to Transformers 2? Nay, Transformers 2 is a pile of shit. <laughs> <clears throat> You're not wrong there, Shakespeare. No, I write, freeze frame. Shakespeare, Shakespeare, nothing to fear. Now the bard is a part of our lives. Shakespeare, credits. So that's the new sitcom I'm working on. Um, it's um, Shakespeare sitcom, shitcom, apt, apt on many levels, I'm sure you agree. And I've got, I've got so many ideas, you better back away, the ideas factory's about to blow. <laughs> so I've got two ideas. And um, the first one, well, this one's a hoot and a half, but I don't do no half measures, eh? so you better round that bad boy up. That's two hoots. Save one for later if you like, sweet cheeks. So, um, this first idea is, imagine the scene, right? Shakespeare is in, on a date in a restaurant with not one woman, not two women, but no women, because he's back at home writing. <laughs> okay, that one's not very good, but this one blows that one out of the water. This one is the Napoleon of comedy, a man well known, of course, for his sense of humor. So, <laughs> picture the scene, and this one, like, this is just funny, think about it, right? Right, Shakespeare, his boss from the Globe Theatre, is coming for dinner. Cripes! <laughs> and Shakespeare's forgot to put the turkey in the oven. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, you'll love this. And then uh, <laughs> the, the boss, he comes, he opens the door. And you're like, oh! oh. <laughs> and Shakespeare, he explains the situation and the manager commends him for his honesty. You know, um, 
in hindsight, that idea is a bit shit. <laughs> but I've got, <laughs> I've got another one. It's great, this one. Well, it's, it's more of a, a joke than, than anything, uh, if, if I can remember it. Um, so Shakespeare walks into a, a pub. A <sighs> I'll start again. Shakespeare walks into a, a bar, and the, the, uh, the pub owner, he goes, get out, you fired bard. He says, oh, fuck. Uh, oh, fucking hell. Bard. Shakespeare, Shakespeare, nothing to fear. Now the bard is a part of our lives. Shakespeare. Well, I can't help but notice that this might have run its course a bit. I'm getting that impression. But uh, before I go, I've got a little something for the ladies, and it's, it's in here. <laughs> you thought it was my penis. Cue disappointment. Nope. <laughs> No, it's uh, a medal, and uh, whoever wants it, they just have to shout out my name. You'll be shouting it later when I'm rifling through your cutlery drill. Um, <laughs> that's not a euphemism. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw this out into the audience, and whoever catches it, male, female, livestock, and beyond caring, you just shout out your name, and you get an extra special prize. So here goes. Nobody caught it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That floor gets an extra special prize. Right, I'm going to pick someone <laughs> entirely at random there. Yep, you. I know you. <laughs> I'm getting a name. Alex. Yeah. Alex. Uh, Swahili for genocide, I believe. Beautiful name. Um, yeah, well, you don't just get that medal on the Galvin show. No siree. <laughs> you get... You remember that poem? Remember that poem that I gave to all the ladies? We all loved that, didn't we? We did. Well... This poem is straight from me to you. And it goes a little something like this. Oh, Alex, you are so beautiful for your age. <laughs> when I think of you, I want to slowly slip the uh, DVD out of the DVD player and then put it on top of the case, even though it can go in the case. It's not even mine. And eventually, they're going to pile up, aren't they? And if you knock them over, well, that's going to get scratched. Muggins over is going to have to pay for it. <clears throat> oh, uh, Alex, um, you complete me. Uh, you make me a full circle. Without you, I am 72% of a circle, so Pac-Man. Uh, alone in the hallowed maze of my heart, consuming nothing but uh, pills, cherries, ghosts. Waka waka. Waka waka. Alex. Nothing to fear now that you are a part of my life. Alex. Did you enjoy that? Love it. Yeah, the look of fear definitely says yes. <laughs> so uh, that's unfortunately all I've got time for, but they always say... Oh, they always say end on a high note, so goodbye. Subversive, but not very funny. Thank you.